according to a survey, 86%. Eighty-six percent of adults in the United States think that the U.S. government system is broken. Of these eighty-six percent, eight out of ten of them think that the government can be fixed. Now, part of twenty-two. First thing on some, a lot of these problems in this book, they try to confuse you because they give you eighty-six percent, and then they say eight out of ten. What could you do to that 8 out of 10 right away to make it so it's less confusing? 80%. Just change it to 80% so that everything looks the same so that you're not confused if you wanted to do that. Or change them. I usually change them all into fractions, but it might be better decimals or percents uh, for you guys. It says, find the probability that a randomly selected uh, adult thinks that thinks the U.S. system is broken and thinks the government can be fixed. Nothing hard about this one because they told you the answer. What percent of the people think that it's broken? That was the 86, right? But of those 86, what percent thinks that it can be fixed? 80%. So the answer to that one's 0 .80 or 80%, 8 out of 10, whichever one you like there. I'm sorry, hold on, let me read that again. Maybe I'm wrong. And probability that random looks like an adult thinks that the U.S. and thinks that the government can be fixed. Oh, I am wrong. Because it says and. So we're randomly selecting this adult from all of them. My fault. So what do we got to do with these two if we're taking out of all adults? Multiply. So it's 0.86 times 0.80. Sorry, I was reading the wrong thing. Somebody help me out with your calculator. What's 0.86 times 0.80? 68. To go out a little farther than that, I think it's 0.688, isn't it? So, so maybe 69 percent. B, this is sort of the one I was thinking of. Given that the randomly selected adult thinks that the U.S. government system is broken. So when we're looking at this group, we're only looking at the people who think it's broken. What percent of the people think it's broken? So we're just looking at that 86%. We're not looking at all the adults this time. That's what it says. It says, given that you're picking from that group, find the probability that he or she thinks the government cannot be fixed. What percent of the people thought the government could be fixed? Out of those people, it was 80%, right? So if 80% of the people think it could be fixed, how could we figure out the ones out of this group who think it can't be fixed? Just take one minus that. Remember, this is called the complement. We talked about that in the first section. Complement of a group. If this is the group that thinks it can be fixed, to find the ones that think it can't be fixed, the complement, you just subtract from one. What do you end up with? 2-0 or 20%. Letter C. Would it be unusual for a randomly selected adult to think the U.S. government system is broken and think the government can be fixed? So that's what we did up here. Is that an unusual event? What makes something unusual again? Less than, well, for this. Not 0 0.5, 0.5%, 0 0.05, right? So less than 0.05, so 0.05 or 
don't get the two mixed up, 5%. If it's less than that, then that makes it unusual. Is this unusual? Or this one? Not unusual. <coughs> Not unusual. And if you want the reason, it would be because it's like 69%. That's not less than 5% of 0.05. Next question. to Bayes' theorem, the probability of event A, given that event B has occurred, is, and they give you this big long formula there. Somebody help me out so we can write that big long formula. Probability that A, given that B occurs, that's what this says, probability that we've already got B, and we want to know what's the probability that A is going to happen once we have that B. Somebody help me out and read me the rest of that. What's it say? It says like the probability of A, what? Uh, read the, on page 154, the so formula. Just probability of B backslash A. Is that all that's on top? On bottom? Is that right so far? Yeah. Plus? Plus. Probability of A like the whole dash thing out there. A prime. Yeah. Times probability of B dash A prime. B dash A prime. Is that all of it? Yeah. Now remember this A prime, that's the complement, right? So if the probability of A, that's the complement. So here, if the probability of A is 0.1, then to find the prime of that, or the complement of that, we subtract from 1. So 1 minus 0.1, which would be 0.9. So all we're going to do on all this is we're going to plug in to each of these things. Now on problem 36, I'm sure they tell us all the stuff that we need. What's the first thing they tell us on 36? Uh, PA equals 3 over 8. So the probability of PA is 3 eighths. Let's change this into a decimal so that we don't have to mess with the fraction. Somebody take 3 eighths and divide it for me. 3 divided by 8. Give me three numbers. 375. So everywhere we see probability of A, we're going to put in 0.375. So we got 0.375 here, 0.375 down here on the bottom. Uh, we don't have any other probabilities of A anywhere, but we do have this A prime, which is the complement. And to get that, all we're going to do is take 1 minus 0.375. Somebody help me out and do that. What's 1 minus 0.375? Take that times something here in a minute. Take this times something here in a minute. Take this times something here in a minute. What else do they tell us? Is 
So anywhere we see probability of B given that A occurred, we're going to put in that number, 0.667. Uh, we got it there, we got it there. That's the A prime one. And then the probability of B is A prime is about 3 over 5. 3 over 5, somebody divide that for me. So we have all this. Mine looks terrible because it's all spread out. But all you're actually going to do, multiply those two together. So on your calculator, multiply those two. Now, on your calculator, just so we don't have to take anything out of the calculator, hit divided by. And then you're going to punch in all of this, but you're going to put parentheses around it. So divided by, and you punch all that in, but you put parentheses around it. says. Anybody tell me what that says again? Be careful now. Does that mean divided by? It means probability that we get A or that event A occurs given that what's already happened. That B's already occurred. So got, this is something you've got to be able to do or got to know how to read probability that we get A if B's already occurred. So the probability that one of it occurs given that something else has already happened. This would be if we wanted to change it to a percent, 40 percent. A lot of times throughout this book there'll be problems like this. We'll probably never well, I shouldn't say that. Not very often will we talk about Bayes' theorem, but if we do talk about it, all you're going to be doing is putting in numbers like that. They're going to give you all the information you need just to plug in the numbers. Except for, like this one, I don't think they should have gave you that number. We should have, you should have been able to come up with that number on your own. Just knowing what, if A occurs, Whatever the probability of A is, you subtract that from 1 to get that prime, A prime, the complement. Next question. Sydney, any of this sinking in way over there? She's always got such a lovely look on her face. Camden set you over there all by yourself. I don't know why he did that. Oh my. Why were you being mean, Camden? Make sure you ask. Got questions? Again, Mr. Clark. 34. 34. 34. Three people are selected at random. Find the probability that all three share the same birthday and that none of, uh, and B, none of the three share the same birthday. Let's do this in here. What's your birthday? July. 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 What is July? What month? 
Lucas, what's your birthday? July 11th. Ms. Clark, what's your birthday? same birthday out of all you guys none. none so when we're doing when we're doing these three people that we're picking at random are we going to suspect that there's a high probability that all three of them have a the same birthday it's probably not right probably not is your birthday one of those That's not really my birthday. That's my son's birthday, though. Why don't we hear those things? Most of <laughs> Jacob got that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Who was born on that day? Oh, my I was born on that day. Yeah, I, that's why too I'm early in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> so we have all those birthdays. Not much chance that... Uh, we could probably go throughout the whole school, and there's very few people who have the same birthdays. If you ever look down on the thing that Mr. McKnight in the office puts up down there, they probably make you guys put it up when you're in there, right? So that board that you put up down there, as you're putting it up, you probably notice not very many, even out of 400 students or whatever we have here, not very many people share the same birthday, all right? Now, out of 400 students, is there going to be some people who share the same birthday? Four yeah, because there's only, there only four grades. but there's only how many days? 365. So some of them have to have the same birthday. All right. So on this, when we're looking at this, it says probability that all three share the same birthday. So we want the probability that all three have the same birthday. The way we're going to find that is you got to find the first person, and this is where it's hard, what are the possible dates? Let's forget all this. What's the possible dates that this first person could have told me? One through. Is it just one? No. They could have told me how many different dates? 365. So the first person could pick any, you know, their birthday could be anything. So it's 365 out of. 365, but then we got to times that by the second person and the third person. Now with the second person, if the first person told us 728, then the second person has to tell us what? 728. So how many, what's the probability that they're going to tell us that same date? One out of 365. What's the probability that the third person is going to tell us that same date? One out of 365. The first person, the, the date really doesn't matter because they could have said January 1st. What we care about is that the second person then says what? January 1st. And the third person says January 1st. So the first person could be anything, but then the others. Now what we need to do is figure this out. I can do the top, somebody multiply the bottom for me. 365, and you could just punch it into your calculator, 365 to the third power. <coughs> What'd you 
uh, there's not a way I can tell you how to do every single problem because there's so many different things that you can throw into the into the problem. So some of them you just have to use your brain a little bit and think it through. Other questions? Addition rule, addition rule, these are your notes for today. A little tougher today because it's hard to distinguish between some of these things. You start adding more and more stuff in and you've got to decide, hey, am I using this or am I doing it this way? So you've got to be able to distinguish between them. So addition rule, determine uh, the things we're going to cover. What I would write down on this is just the title. Determine if two events are mutually exclusive or not mutually exclusive, be able to use the addition rule. What do you think the addition rule is? Instead of the multiplication rule last time was we took this probability and this probability and multiplied them together. Now what do you think you're going to do with them? You're going to add them together. So addition rule. <coughs> mutually exclusive events. Two events are mutually exclusive. If I have any idea what exclusive means. <coughs> Say again. Sort of. So excluded. Does, does exclusive have to mean excluded? Like everybody excludes Michael from all their games and stuff and they'll never they just leave him out all the time that's not does exclusive have to mean that could, could exclusive mean a good thing yeah, I, like, if you're in an exclusive like, club doesn't that mean something good so exclusive if you're dating what's that mean you're exclusive with that person then that means you're not with any other you're not dating anybody else so it's just you're dating that one person and that's it you're exclusive so it's just you and that person so mutually exclusive events are events that cannot occur at the same time events that can't occur at the same time I have th these three markers in my hand, and I'm going to pick one at random, and I want the probability that I pick a black or a red. Pick a black would be one out of three, pick a red would be one out of three, right? Can I pick a black and a red at the same time? <laughs> no. Those are mutually exclusive events, all right? To maybe completely understand it, you need to know what uh, not or events that are not mutually exclusive are. So if I said I'm going to pick a male student out of the classroom, and then I say I'm going to pick a female student, mutually exclusive events. You can't pick a male and a female at the same time, and we won't mention. We won't mention any of the stuff that's going on in the world, right? So that stays out there. So those are mutually exclusive. Now, if I say I want to pick a male and a 17-year-old, is there anybody in the room that's male that's 17? Would those be mutually exclusive events? <coughs> No, because if I pick Lucas, I'm picking a male and somebody who's 17. <laughs> right? So they're not mutually exclusive. They could happen at the same time. So mutually exclusive means they can't happen at the same time. I use these uh, Venn diagrams to show you here. So A and B. If 
If I pick something from A, is it ever going to be in set B? That's mutually exclusive. Here, if I pick something in A, could it be in B? Yeah, those, they share some, and that stuff in the middle there shows that these are not mutually exclusive. You could pick A and B at the same time. We could pick this, something right there that's in both sets at the same time. So mutually exclusive, can occur at the same time, not mutually exclusive, uh, could occur at the same time. So if I'm flipping a coin, I don't have any coins on my day, I think. If I'm flipping a coin, can I get a head and a tail at the same time? No. If I'm drawing cards from a deck of cards, can I get a five and a six at the same time? No. There's no card in there that's got a five and a six mixed on it. Now, somebody give me an example of if I'm using a deck of cards, a way we could do two events that could happen at the same time. A five and a diamond. A five and a diamond. So if I drew a five, if I said I want to draw a five or a diamond, <coughs> well, in the deck there's that one card that's a five and a diamond. So those events would not be mutually exclusive. Uh, decide if the events are mutually exclusive. Rolling a three and a four on the die. So we want to roll three and then we want to roll four. Mutually exclusive or not mutually exclusive? Exclusive, right? Can't happen at the same time. You can't roll three and all of a sudden it's got a four on there also. All right? So mutually exclusive. Randomly select a male student and select uh, a nursing student or a person that's a nursing major. Not mutually exclusive because could you have a male student who also belongs to this group? Yeah. yeah. So not mutually exclusive. The word and means you want both events to occur. You might want to write this down. The word or, you want one or the other or both. So sometimes when we're doing probabilities, we'll have and or or, and it gets real confusing. read stuff carefully. Sometimes a probability, uh, it'll say this. We want probability that you get A and B. Then the next problem will say we want the probability that you get A or B. They mean two different things. Let's use our deck of cards and just talk about one. We said five of diamonds. That's what Michael said. What two events are we having there with the five of diamonds? We're, we're what you call a what? Five and a diamond. So if I put that in there, that in there, what's the probability that you draw a five and a diamond? One out of 52. Now we go down here, and the event A is a 5, and the event B is a diamond. What's the probability that you draw a 5 or a diamond? Changes everything, doesn't it? What's the probability that you draw a 5? 4 out of 52. What's the probability that you draw a diamond? 13 out of 52, except there's one mess up there. You gotta add them together, that's what you're gonna do, but you also gotta do something else. There's a five that's also in the diamond, so they're not mutually exclusive, and that messes everything up. So not only do you have to add them together, here we have, if we're looking at this and we're looking at favorable outcomes, how many cards we could draw on top, we can't just do, okay, there's four fives plus 13 diamonds, because that one five of diamonds, we counted it twice. So that's going to screw up our probability. All right? So we'd have to subtract off that 
number there when it occurs at the same time, which is 1. So 4 plus 13 is what? So there's 16 favorable outcomes out of how many total outcomes? 52. That would be the probability there. Now we're going to have a couple of formulas that's going to show you how to do that for sure. Each one. So and or or, if the events are mutually exclusive or not mutually exclusive, makes a difference. So probability A and B means that you get A then B. You want this and this. You, you get them both. Probability A or B means you get one or the other or you get both. Same thing we just said on that last slide. The addition rule. I'm going to put both these up here. first one here is when they're not mutually exclusive. The second one is when they are mutually exclusive. Those two formulas are what you need this time. The addition rule, you just take the two probabilities, add them together. But if they're not mutually exclusive, then we had to subtract off that one number, that five of diamonds. We had to get rid of it. However many that could happen at the same time, we have to get rid of that. exclusive because all we got to do is find the probability of one, probability of the other, and add them together. That doesn't mean that Sophie can just make all of them mutually exclusive just so it makes it easier on her. That doesn't work that way.
just say? So come up here and sing it for us. I'll take away one of those zeros you got in the great book if you come up here and sing it for us. Come on. Come on, Sydney. Come on. I'll make everybody turn around and look the other direction. That's too I sing in front of a, like a full group of people when I was in like seventh grade. It was to the air of mine. Come up here and sing for us. I'll take away one of the zeros. All right, example, using the uh, addition rule, you select a card from a standard deck, you find the probability uh, that the card is, or you want to find the probability that the card is a four or an ace. So we want to draw a card, and we want it to be a four or an ace. To do this, all we're going to do, we're going to find the probability that it's a four, probability that it's an ace, and then the probability that both could occur at the same time if we need to do that. But when we look at this, if we're drawing a four or an ace, are these exclusive events or not mutually exclusive events? Exclusive. They're exclusive. So do we even have to worry about subtracting off anything? What's the probability that you draw a four? Four out of 52. Plus, what's the probability that you draw an ace? Four out of 52. We're not drawing a four and an ace. We're not drawing two separate cards. We're just drawing one card, and we want it to be a four or an ace. And all we do with those two is add them. When you add them, when you get on bottom, 52. Don't add the bottoms. Eight out of 52, that would work. You could reduce it down. You could change it to a decimal. Whatever's easy. You probably at least want to reduce it down uh, we could reduce this down, let's see, that'd be 2 over 26, no, hold on, 2 over 13, sorry, my fault, 2 out of 13, because that would make more sense. We're saying 2 out of 13 times we're going to draw one of those two cards. Notice here, I even drew the little bubbles for you. Mutually exclusive. Can't have a four and an ace at the same time. You roll a die, you find the probability of rolling a number less than three or rolling an odd number. So probability less than three or an odd number. What's the probability of rolling something less than three? Be careful. Two out of six. <laughs> two or a one, right? That's the only one's less than three. So two out of six plus what's the probability of rolling an odd number? Well, if it's under three. Just odd number. All right, three out of six. Three out of six. We could get a one, we could get a three, we could get a five. So three out of six. Now the bad thing with these two, if we add them together, we get five out of six. That's the wrong answer because are these two events mutually exclusive? No. When we did this first one, lower than three, that was a one or a two. We did this one, it was a one, a three, a five. Well, they share what? They share that one. So we need to subtract off the one that we counted twice, which would be one out of six. We need to subtract off that one number that they happens both times. So what's two over six plus three over six? 5 over 6, subtract off the 1 over 6, and you get what? 4 over 6, or 2 out of 3. If you wanted to change it to a decimal, it'd be 0. 0.667, so on, so on, so on. They share that 1. It's in both events, so we have to subtract that one off. little harder. Frequency distribution shows the volume of sales and the number of months a sales representative reached each sales level during the past three months. If this sales pattern continues, what is the probability that the sales rep will see between 75,000 and 124,999 next month? So we want the probability that they're going to be in that range right there which if we look over here at this, 
75,000 to, oops, right there in that area. How could we find that probability? So there's 36, there's 36 total. We need to do that. Remember when we were doing the, the probability dist or uh, the distribution charts and we had to sum this one up, right? So we're saying this time 36 goes there. So how are we going to do that? Probability that it's favorable. I'm not writing all those big numbers out in here. So Katie said 16 out of 36. Now, these two events, are they mutually exclusive? Can they both happen at the same time? No, they can't sell in one area and the other, so do we have to worry about subtracting anything off? No. Now, what they did there is they actually did this. They did 7 out of 36 plus 9 out of 36, but Katie did that in her head instead, and she got 16 out of 36. <laughs> And again, we could reduce that down or change it to a decimal. Let's see if see if we're right here. What geniuses? A blood bank catalogs the types of bloods given by donors during the past five days. The donor is selected at random. Find the probability the donor has type O uh, or type A blood. Type O or type A blood. So if you got type O blood, is that mutually exclusive or not mutually exclusive to having type A blood? It's exclusive. You can't you can't have O and A, right? Which one is it that you could have? You'd be some kind of freak if you had both. Alright? So you, you can't have both of those. So if we're looking at uh, let me read it again. Donors select at random find the probability donor has type O or type A. So we're looking at probability that you have O or A. What's the probability that in the last five days a donor had type O blood? Where are you going to get your numbers from? 184 out of the total, which is 409. That's for O. Now we also want A, so is that going to be? 64 over 409. Do we have to subtract anything off? No. So we get, uh, what is that, 348? 53. 53, what? Um, I already forgot to put a 9, so. Can I answer so quick? It's a school. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. It's, 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 it's just them. Doing some one call, probably telling. If I said it was Mrs. Kennedy, Is that what we got? 348 out of 409? Find the probability a donor has type B blood or RH negative blood. This one's a little harder. So we want probability type B <coughs> or RH negative. Does anybody know what the RH negative and positive, all that means? It's like a protein on the end of the um, cell. So what's it, what's it affect when you? It affects like basically like it's a thick, that protein is basically a key for, I can't Well, if you have a positive, you can't get to negative, but if you have negative, you can get to and I think, too, um, and it might be different now, but it used to be back in the olden days when I was growing up, when you were getting married, they checked your blood type because positives and negatives, you couldn't have children if you were something like that. But now I think they've fixed all that. Yeah, they took some of the baby. And then, like, when the baby's blood was fine, there was, like, something weird. It could have a negative or something. But if the mom's blood is positive, baby has to get that blood from the mom so it'll attack itself. She had like weird like red spots on her face. Just blotches like. So a lot of that they fixed now. It used to be I know when and when my mom and dad had all their kids 
back when you got married, you went and got blood taken, and they looked at what your RH was to see if you were actually going to be able to have kids or not, and because then a lot of times they say, do you really want to get married? Because you're not going to be able to have kids. Because the that is weird. That's so weird. So we want to do this. What's the probability of getting uh, picking somebody that had B type? Forty five over four hundred nine. Somebody's in a hurry because they didn't want to hear about having the babies and stuff. Sixty five over four hundred nine. Sixty five over four hundred nine. Yeah. And we got that from right down here, right? Now we're going to have to subtract off the ones that have B and RH negative. So we go over here, we got B and RH negative. So how many are we going to subtract off? Eight, Eight out of 409. 102. 102. Again, you probably don't want to leave that as a fraction. 102 over 409 means absolutely nothing to nobody because how, how often are you going to pick 409 people to choose from? That doesn't, just doesn't make sense. If it was 1,000 exactly or something, then it might make a little more sense. But 409, and you'll see a lot of polls and stuff on TV where they'll do that. They'll have, oh, we polled 12,253 people. And they do that for a reason. All right, they do it because it makes it more confusing and it's harder to understand. And then they can sort of make it sound like whatever they want it to sound like. Now you see the old commercial, there was an old commercial about Trident or something. Three out of five dentists, they actually wanted you to know. Three out of five. There's only two that didn't pick it. Three out of five have their patients chew this gum. All the stuff that we've covered on probability, I know this is so hard to see. I shoved this on here. We had classical probability, had empirical probability, uh, range of probabilities. Remember, probabilities always got to be be, uh, be from zero to one. Complements to find the complement of the event, you just take one minus the probability of whatever that event is. Multiplication rule and addition rule. That's what we just covered. That's your assignment, page 161. You got about 17 minutes. I think this time there's actually problems up here that I worked on the board. Do you want me to go through them with you? Now this assignment, or do you want me to go sit down?
problem 14. I'm not sure why I picked problem 14. It must be a harder one or something. A math conference has an attendance of 4,950 people of those 2,110 are college professors, 2,575 are female. Of the college professors, 960 are female. Are the events selecting a female and selecting a college professor mutually exclusive? Yes or no? Yes, no, no. And the reason is because you could pick a college professor that is female to pick a college professor that is female. No. Uh, part B, the conference selects people at random to win prizes. Find the probability that the person selected at random is female or a college professor. So female, what probability that they're female or professor? How many people were at the event, at the seminar, whatever they said? Forty-nine fifty. How many of them are female? Twenty-five seventy-five. So we got twenty-five seventy-five. Then we want a professor. How many of them are college professors? Two thousand one hundred and twenty. One hundred and twenty. Now, we've already decided, part A, we decided that they're not mutually exclusive. So that means we're going to have to subtract something off. And what we're going to subtract off is the females who are professors. How many females did they say were professors? 960? All we really need to do are the top numbers. The bottom number stays the same all the way for all those fractions. Somebody do all that math for us, what we come out with? And we probably, because this doesn't make a whole lot of sense written this way, go ahead and divide those two numbers. What do we come up with? Point seven five. So if we were going to pick a female and a professor, about a 75% chance that We said that's what we did. We did all the same thing that I have up here. Problem 20. Just looking at problem 20 just because that's what I have up here. Uh, problem 20. They say Tacoma Narrows Bridge. Anybody know what Tacoma Narrows Bridge is? I bet you watch the video because I know what my sons do. They sit on their stupid phones and 
watch random videos. I bet you've watched the video of Tacoma Narrows Bridge before. It's a bridge that somebody produced been several years ago now. And if you watch the video of it, the bridge is like going up and down, up and down, and all over the place. Huh? So that's what it is. Uh, in Washington, as shown in the pie chart, find the, each probability. Randomly selecting a car with two occupants. <coughs> now, of course, that bridge isn't the same way as it was when that video, that was the original bridge. There's a new bridge now. So part A, we're using, uh, let's see, the second pie chart there. Randomly selecting a car with two occupants. Two occupants. So we just want the probability, it's number 20, that you have two passengers or two occupants in the car. Uh, how, what percentage do we have there? 29.8%, so that's pretty easy. Part B says randomly selecting a car with two or more occupants. What would we do there? We want two or more. So we want to go two or higher. And we could add up all those. I'm, I'm sort of lazy. So I could also do what? Take one minus the probability that the car only has one occupant. How come we don't have to subtract off the probability that the car has no occupants? Somebody has to be driving. Well, now they have like these robotic cars, so you know. We're not that far. So it ends up being what, about 44.5%? Is that right? Again, make it as easy as possible on yourself. I didn't want to add all those up. So I looked at it and said, hey, you know what, if we just subtracted one minus this, that's going to give us all those added up. Now, not always will that work. Sometimes you're going to have to do it the harder way. Randomly selecting a car between two and five occupants inclusive. So we want probability to have two, three, four, five. So what parts does that lead off, leave off? Six, seven, six. So we could, maybe to make it easier on ourselves, we could just say one minus the probability that you have one, or six. We could add the one and six together, subtract that from one, or we could add up the two, three, four, and five, and eh, probably about the same this time. It's not one, not really all that much harder than the other. Um, so what is it? It's like 56, 56.5%, so subtract that from one would be about 43.5, 43.5%. You guys say you had a question? I thought somebody yelled out a number a little while ago that they wanted to see. Now we'll go on to 24. Problem 24. I'm just going to go through this one this time. What's written up here? Problem 24 says. In a sample of 1,000 people, 525 men, 475 women, 113 are left-handed, 63 men are left-handed, 50 women are left-handed. The results of the sample are shown in the table. A person selected at random, find the sample, uh, or from the sample, find the probability of each event. Probability A, person is left-handed or female. So, and I, you can tell I copied this out of the book because I'd probably write it this way, left-handed, or female, left-handed or female. 
What's the probability that somebody's left-handed out of all those people? How many left-handers did we have? 113 out of 1,000. How many females did we have? 475 out of 1,000. Now, are those two events mutually exclusive? Could you have a left-handed female? Yeah. So we have to subtract off those people. In this case, there was 50 left-handed females, right? So we subtract that off, and you get 0.538, or about 54%. Part B says a person is a right-handed male. So we want right-handed or male. Well, hold on now. Right-handed or male, yeah. So if we had 113 left-handed people, that must mean we had how many right-handed people? 887. Subtract that from 1,000, right? 887 out of 1,000 were right-handed. Five hundred and twenty-five were male. But then we had a whole bunch of right-handed males, so we gotta subtract them off because we count them twice. So this is a right-handed male. And we get about 0.95. Well, that don't seem right. You want to write down the rest of the answers, Ken?
did too. Yeah, my dude just get it right and start laughing.
the district job interview contest. Resumes and cover letters need to be sent to Mr. and Mrs. Kennel at the conclusion of this announcement. All first place winners will need to be um, in the act shop during intervention today. The first and second place numbers for each category are as follows. Division 5, first place, Chloe Taylor. Second place, Caleb Gunther. Division 4, first place, Erica Gallagher. Second place, Mariah Lay. Division 3, first place, Maple Stowers. Second place, Dawson Ward. Division 2, first place, Caitlin Deerdorf. Second place, Elijah Hughes. And Division 1, first place, Caleb Miller. Second place, Cameron Harrison. Congratulations. Last night at Antique Quiz Bowl started their season. The team started off strong with a victory over Twin Valley South, 58 to 45. They fell to a very strong Miami East team in the second match, losing 76 to 42. In the third match against Dixie, they made a strong rally at the end, but fell short, losing 71 to 56. Their next match is scheduled for November 20th at Eaton. Students, remember the homecoming pictures are in. Stop by Ms. Duker's office to pick up your pictures if you ordered them. A GSA chapter is being formed at National Trail for students who are part of the are part of or support the LGBTQ community. If you are interested in being part of the GSA, stop by Ms. Duker's office and sign up to get more information. That's all the announcements today. Thank you.